Hey sports fans and welcome to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. I'm really happy that you decided to tune into this episode. People have been asking me about a popular formula we created using some crazy high quality herbs. It's not a panacea, but it does counter a lot of the American diet and lifestyle, such as the stress, relative social isolation, lack of walkable space in most Western cities, All of the challenges of preservatives, GMOs, automobile culture, and our love of beer and wine, all this creates a unique set of digestive challenges that can create the perfect storm for chronic disease. It's not realistic to ask people to live like monks, Chinese hermits, or Indian adepts, although many modern health trends actually seem to be asking people to do just that. Fasting, intermittent fasting, prolonged meditation avoiding grains, all of these are certainly effective and they have a long historic basis. They can work really well for you and I think for short periods they make a lot of sense. Thankfully, there's also a historic basis that goes back a long time for people living life to the fullest and partying a bit too hard and using plant-based medicines to even it all out. Having too many carbs and sugar and rocking out on zithers into the wee hours of the night is nothing new. People have been doing this as long as we possibly have been able to do it because, I mean, why not? And the why not may be, okay, there are some negative health effects. However, you balance them out and you can make the best of it. So this MicroGuard Plus formula was created with this in mind, and it wasn't created out of thin air. It's based on traditional formulas which address the roots of food stagnation, gut dysbiosis, and the effects of stress on digestion, also Um, Stress in this case could be both um, mental stress and also just being off your circadian rhythms, eating a bit too late because, you know, beer comes first and then pizza seems like a much better idea, even if you're trying to be keto-ish. So then, thankfully, we were lucky enough to get the top quality herbs on the planet on each of the herbs that we use, thanks to our time working in the herbal pharmaceutical industry in China. We call it MicroGuard Plus. Hey, I know you can probably think of a better name, but that's the best I could do. I'm sorry, I didn't go to marketing school. Went to Chinese medicine school. Yeah, that's what you get. But at least the label isn't cartoony. Anyway, it's a wonderful herbal formula that supports digestion. It's great when you eat something that you shouldn't. It's a forgiving formula. It's also an herbal formula which specifically protects from alcohol-induced damage to the gut because we aren't perfect. And there's an herb in there that we're going to be talking about today, which does this. And this is because the botanical biohacking approach is one of adaptation and not perfection. Living an awesome life means that sometimes you eat the imperfect foods, you drink a little bit too much because there are life occasions that call for it. And using a sophisticated knowledge to have our cake and eat it too just makes life that much sweeter. So today I want to talk about an herb that is in MicroGuard Plus, but not MicroGuard Original. Honestly, I like Plus a lot better. It's a lot more versatile and it's better for um, modern people who don't have a lot of heat signs. MicroGuard Plus counters a lot of the cold, damp phlegm, that kind of thing. It's my preference, not for everybody. Again, not for everybody, but it's for a lot of people in in a modern Western world. So one of the herbs in there helps to repair damage caused by excesses of alcohol. And this herb is called Gogan. So first, let's start with a folktale. Now, to be honest, there are a few folktales on this, and all of them are kind of lame. So I'm going to speed this one along just a little bit. So it goes something like this. In a mountain forest, there's an old hillbilly who is digging up roots for moonshine money. Moonshine? Well, okay, it was baijiu, uh, rice wine. So this is a toothless yokel. But one day he hears a ruckus, and there's a 14-year-old boy who's tearing through the forest like the Mayan guy in Apocalypto. The boy kneels before him and says, please save me. His voice was cracking with emotion. He said, Grandpa, they're trying to kill me. The old hillbilly says, who are you? He said, I'm the son of Lord Go. And the treacherous court officials brought charges slandering my father. The stupid king believed them. And the soldiers have been ordered to kill my whole family. I'm the last of my family line. I am the root of my family. Please save me. If you save me, you will save my honorable ancestral line. 
the old hillbilly was in a bit of a pickle because on one hand, if he turns the boy over, he may get a reward. They'll definitely kill the boy, which, you know, that's not a nice thing to do. It's going to be hard for even a hardened mercenary to do that. But on the other, let's say that Lord Go's family somehow comes back and they're on top again, then definitely that hillbilly is going to get his head cut off. So it's a really difficult position for him to be in. So the hillbilly decides, okay, he'll hide the kid. So he says, um, all right, hurry up, kid. There's a cave up yonder. The far back of the cave, there's a crack. You can slide into that crack. Nobody will know it's there. It kind of blends in. The government troops come. They search everywhere, but find it empty. They interrogate the old man, but he knew a way to make them go away. Um, He started trying to sell them herbs, which would make them invincible in battle and cause them to grow penises the size of war clubs. Basically, he just decided to annoy them. Kind of like a spam email folder for, you know, Kratom and Herbal Viagra, all that stuff. He just turned into that. So people, you know, the military guys rolled their eyes. They're like, all right, get this old fool away from me. After three days, they left annoyed, and they were really happy to be rid of the old man who was using the power of annoyance for good. So, you know, there's the silver lining. So the old man went and got the boy out of the cave and asked him what he would do next. And the boy said he had nowhere to go and wished to live simply like the old hillbilly. So the hillbilly's like, all right, look, I can't support you, but... If you want to live here, you need to be up in the hills picking this herb all the time. The boy said, well, he could use the uh, exercise. He needs to get his 10,000 steps in a day. Old man said, you know, it's going to be more like 50,000. You better get up early and get up that mountain. So the old man showed the boy the herbs he specialized in. It could cure fever, thirst, and diarrhea. It was great to reverse damage caused by moonshine. And he would know a lot about it because he was an alcoholic. At night, the old man drank himself to sleep because, of course, he did. But in the morning, he took his herbs. Well, he took his herbs the night before. In the morning, he would wake up refreshed. So that's kind of interesting. Eventually, the old man died because, of course, he did. Probably (laughs) pretty young for his age. And the son of Lord Go moved to town and started scaling up the business. He sold his herbs to pharmacies and started to make a killing. He would put on makeup to look sexy and go visit doctors, bringing them roasted duck and leaving them herb samples. Probably. I mean, that's what drug reps do, right? So couldn't have been much different in those days. So pretty soon his business was flowing, but the herb had no name. So he named it Gogan, the root of Lord Go. He named it after himself. Now, okay, this is definitely not the nicest thing to do considering this old hillbilly whose name we don't even know saved his life and taught him about the herb. However, if you've ever met um, a second generation government official type in China, it's like a 14 year old kid of um, somebody from a prominent family. This is pretty much how they roll. They're going to view the peasant as kind of uh, someone to be used and take all the credit for themselves, which kind of makes me think this is more accurate than it is a folktale because that's about what you would expect from, you know, some little Prince Joffrey type. Anyway, you got to remember he was in the palace until he was 14. And in spite of his accent, uh, he's pretty, you know, pretty big on himself and his family name. Pretty proud of his family name. So anyway, Gogan, named after a spoiled rich kid who took other people's information um, and uh, profited off of it without citing sources. So... Apparently, nothing is new in herbal medicine. People are still doing that. And, uh, well, looks like that comes with some historic precedence as well. So this herb, Gogan, is called Prararia radix. Prararia radix. Prararia. 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 Puerin is the major bioactive ingredient isolated from the root of Pueria lobata. Its main metabolite, Puerin, was isolated from Gogan in the late 1950s, and since then its pharmacological properties have been extensively investigated. It's available in common foods, so it's used as a cooking 
spice, I suppose you could say, although more of a medicated dish, and it's been used widely for the treatment of cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases, diabetes, diabetic complications, osteonecrosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, endometriosis, and cancer. Now keep in mind, it's not just, oh, this is good for endometriosis. It's not. It's part of herbal formulas which work on the underlying root patterns of these diseases. So whenever we're talking about pharmacology in these cases, uh, for the most part, we're looking at formulas which use this herb as the basis um, based on its pattern. When we're looking at single herbs and the testing of single herbs, we're mainly looking at animal studies. So just keep that in mind. The beneficial effects of Purin seem to be due to the vasodilation, cardioprotection, and neuroprotection, as well as its antioxidant, anti-cancer, anti-inflammation, and pain alleviating effects. It seems to help promote bone formation, and it inhibits alcohol intake and uh, attenuates insulin resistance. So I guess that's why it's good for the diabetes and partying. So traditionally, it's used in the treatment of diarrhea, dysentery, deafness, and cardiovascular diseases. There are also isolated injections of this, and this is widely used as a vasodilator for angina and myocardial infarction. However, according to Shui Lan Chiu, PhD. She's not a big fan of the injectables because the batch consistency, quality, and safety, it's really been tested a lot on animals, not so much on people. So as much as I think it's cool and would love to grab the syringes, she kind of has put the brakes on that until more research has come out. So for those of you who like to do injections, that's the take from at least one herbal pharmacologist. Compounds in Gogen quickly pass through the blood-brain barrier, and it is uh, measured on brain penetration indexes. And this is probably why it's being used uh, for neuropharmacological activities. So it's helping to, potentially helping to clean out the brain. It's used as an herb which is good for colds, so it's um, apparently not helping those colds or pathogens to spread up into the brain. It's interesting because traditionally this herb is used to guide herbs to the nape of the neck and for tension um, and pain in the back of the neck, particularly associated with the immune system. So Gogan is used in diabetic retinopathy. Now, that's kind of neat and I imagine that has a lot to do with the fact that it's neuroprotective and has uh, regulatory effects on the insulin and seems to be helping through a number of pathways with diabetes. So it makes sense that it's helping with that. It has hypotensive effects, so it'll help with the regulation of blood pressure. Anti-fatigue in mice. Apparently when you um, start making mice do jazzercise and then give them a little bit of Gogan, it helps them to jazzercise. A little. Okay, I'm sorry, it wasn't jazzercise. It was apparently exhaustive swimming time test. So you dump a bunch of mice in a bucket of water and see how long it takes them not to die. You know, I'm going to just pretend that was jazzercise. All right, coronary artery disease. Pour in at 120 milligrams per kilogram a day could increase serum nitrate contrast concentration in rat with myocardial ischemia. And it also induced gene expression or activation of endothelial nitric oxide, which is kind of a form of chi. And this has helped to protect it against the myocardial infarction. When rats are given acid-induced neurotoxicity, that's not nice, giving them some of this uh, Gogan, a.k.a. Pororen, uh, seems to help with that. Okay, so MicroGuard Plus has Gogan. And you can see it's helping with a number of factors, but why exactly was it chosen? Well, it specifically heals gut damage that's uniquely caused by alcohol. Alcohol loves to pass through the gut. It uh, goes right through the membrane, and because of that, Alcohol itself can contribute to leaky gut, and this helps to repair that specific damage which is done by the alcohol. And there's this new class of alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitors from Radix pororia, Gogan. So 
that's kind of awesome. And what's really extra strength cool about Gogan is it can reduce cravings. It is a powerful herb for helping with alcohol cravings. Because if you have alcoholism, it kind of doesn't matter what you're eating because your gut's going to get trashed and you're going to get one of those fat faces. You know, the type I'm talking about. Dude who hangs out at the bar, he's got the fat face, the red nose follows. There's a reason for that. There are very specific changes that happen with gut microbiota, and it changes the way we think, feel, and look. This herb also has effects of isoflavoins on alcohol pharmacokinetics and alcohol drinking behavior in rats. So basically, if you have alcoholic rats, it seems to turn down those cravings. It also appears to naturally boost your body's own glutathione. Glutathione is amazing for detoxifying the body. And it's been proudly tested in China since 2100 BC when King Yu's wife, Yi Di, invented booze. So Chinese people have been getting pretty tanked for a long time. And using herbs which are gut protective, and in particular herbs like gogan, seem to help with this. Also with draw symptoms, it suppresses symptoms in mice. So, okay, how about humans? Well, I have a story about that. A friend of mine had some pretty severe drinking problems. He's getting back on his feet, staying at a mutual friend's house, and um, this friend of ours had known him since they were kids, and he had a bit of a relapse, and he went to the liquor store and got those single shot. He got 30 of those things. I don't know how that was cost effective, but he bought 30 of those things, and he drank them all in his single day, 30 shots in a day. So he was uh, in a bad state. As he was coming down off of it, he had some pretty severe withdrawal symptoms known as delirium tremens which is Harry Potter magic speak for the shakes. It includes mental confusion, involuntary tremors. Uh, yes, and this is often said to require hospitalization. And yes, there's something like a 1 in 20 chance of death. No, I'm not suggesting that you try what I'm about to say that I did. However, I am going to share a technique I use to take the typical withdrawal time of five days down to, well say about eight hours. The information I'm going to tell you about is useful if you like to drink and don't like hangovers, but I would not say that this is a recommended thing. So I do a lot of stupid things to help people who are right in front of me that I don't highly recommend other people do. In any case, this is what I did. He had the shakes, gave him a bunch of MicroGuard Plus. And he said, how much? Now, usually people space it out a little bit. I was like, look, just finish the bottle. So he did. Then I gave him uh, a pretty big bottle. It was at least 100 grams of a 5 to 1 extract. I think it was, uh, I'm not, I don't remember the company, but it was a typical 5 to 1 extract. Honestly, a lot of that stuff is made in the same factory in southern China, even if it says it's from Taiwan. They do a lot of repacking. Anyway, it's all pretty much the same stuff. It's all pretty good. Uh, use that. And I, he said, how much of this tea do I take? I was like, no, you just drink that. You're going to drink that today. So he kept drinking the tea. When he finished one, he just made the other one. He just made another one. And uh, within about, let's see, I was over there about 10 o'clock. Yeah, within about, uh, by about 4 o'clock, he could start to be functional around the house and start to clean up after himself. And by about 5, he was good. And it was typically five days of shaking and vomiting, one in 20 chance of death. You know, and again, you're really supposed to hospitalize people in this case. He's just kind of borderline homeless. Um, and uh, I, okay, probably not even supposed to say this, but I knew I could do better than they could at the hospital this way. And it did work. Now, no, I'm not saying that you should do that. But what I am saying is that it's already taken into account a little bit into the microguard plus. So that's just how powerful this herb is. You can see with the outline of the pharmacology, yeah, this is how it works. And yes, it has really amazing benefits for repairing some of the damage which is specific to alcohol in the gut. And this is why I included this herb into microguard plus because so much of the population has trouble with blood sugar regulation. And yeah, booze doesn't help. I mean, I'm not pointing a finger. I, uh, 
indulge as much as the next person, probably have indulged a little more with all the banquets in China and everything like that. So that damage is there and I'm responsible for it. This is my body. So I put that in MicroGuard Plus. When I take MicroGuard Plus, I'm incidentally healing damage, which has been caused by alcohol. And let's say somebody's never had a drop of alcohol in their life. Well, it's still neuroprotective. It's still helping with insulin and everything else. So a beautiful herb when used in the right ratio, right combination, it's absolutely wonderful. For those of you who have been asking, hey, what is this MicroGuard Plus? What's in it? It's going to take a long time to describe the reasoning as to why every herb is in there. I thought I would take it in parts. So thank you so much for choosing this episode. I'm really glad you listened to this one. Uh, I think it's interesting. It's very useful anyway. If you are somebody who wants to enjoy life, um, sometimes drink a little too much, eat a little too much, stay up too late. Um, hey, we're imperfect, but thankfully if we use botanical medicines in the right way, we can be imperfectly divine and still enjoy a very full, beautiful life. Thanks so much for listening to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. I am your well-behaved host, Dr. Andrew Miles.